Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. My name is Wade Nomura and today we are going to take a look at the International Assembly. And for those of you that don't know what the International Assembly is, it's actually a get-together each year that happens with all 538 governors from around the world, all converging on San Diego. With me today I have special guest, District Governor-Elect Nick Frankel. Nick, welcome. Thank you very much, Wade. I look forward to sharing my experiences at the International Assembly with you and your audience. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. doesn't have to be Rotary. We just want to know about the man. Love to. I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area, which is an exciting place to live. Uh, my career has been in software program management and international telecommunications. I married my childhood sweetheart, and in fact, speaking of Rotary, at the Rotary President-Elect training session, we're actually celebrating 50 years <laughs> together. Have two children. We moved to California on a job transfer for two years. And as you can tell, this is 2016. We haven't gone anyway. Enjoyed the California lifestyle very much. Great, great. Now tell us a little bit about Rotary. How did you get involved with Rotary? You know, Wade, I grew up in a household where service to the community is what we did. When people used to ask my father what his hobby was, he said his hobby was doing good deeds. So when I actually had an opportunity to work and live in the same community and get off of an airplane, my wife, who was very active in the local nonprofit scene, said, you need to join Rotary. And when I got the opportunity, I went to my Rotary meeting. I fell in love with the friendship, the community service, the camaraderie, and the energy of the Rotary Club of Westlake Village Sunrise, and here I am. Very good. Westlake Village Sunrise, tell us a little bit about that club. Westlake Village Sunrise is a medium-sized club, about 65 people. Uh, they do a tremendous amount of international service projects. We work in Honduras. We work in the African country of Niger. Uh, we do projects in our local community. We do Meals on Wheels. We support the Senior Center. And our big fundraiser, the, Kane the Kaneo Wine and Jazz Festival, for the past several years has actually been used to provide musical instruments and education to the schools in our surrounding community. That's, that is great. And by the way, I'm, I'm sure they're going to appreciate that plug, so thank you My for that. My pleasure. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you a hard question now. Okay. What made you decide to become a governor? That is a hard <laughs> question. It's always a hard question. It is a hard <laughs> question. I've had some extraordinary opportunities in Rotary. I've seen the projects that we do in our local community. I've been privileged to visit other countries where we've done Rotary projects and actually talk to the people who have benefited from Rotary projects and in hearing how we have changed their lives, I found the real life that was changed was my own. And that's an experience I'm hoping to share with the Rotarians in District 5240 that we can talk to them about our theme service to serving humanity and help them get some of the doing good in the, com in the world and in their local community that have had, I have had the opportunity to experience. Very good. Now, um, I noticed something else in your resume, and that is um, you're one of the few governors that actually has a wife not only in Rotary but in a different club. Tell it, us how that worked out. It, it's an, it, yeah, it is interesting. I'll tell you what it means is you spend twice as much time. <laughs> Heather was working in Simi Valley when she joined Rotary. In fact, she became a Rotarian because she went to Honduras with me, actually wrote her first grant before she joined Rotary. <laughs> uh, but her manager wanted her to be in the Simi community because that's where she was working. She joined Simi Sunrise, and when she retired, she said, you know, this is my club, and she's been with them forever. Very nice. Uh, that's, that's a good one. So you've been involved with your wife in quite a few of the projects, international projects. It seems like she has a focus also. That's been her focus. That. She is a very focused on international. We, uh, as I said, we've done adopt a village projects in Honduras. We've been to South Africa to visit an AIDS clinic where since the clinic has been in place, not one child uh, who, was being, who was with a mother who had HIV has been born with HIV. So it's those kinds of experiences that you see. The village in Honduras is now basically economically self-sufficient because of all the work we've done with them. And she has been a grant mentor to many other. In fact, we were up in Visalia this weekend talking about a microfinance project 
to benefit the Rotarians in the low in Tulare County and the local community. Now, would you say that because of all your exposure to all these different projects, local projects and international projects, did that create uh, added passion to what Rotary actually does and why you would try and move forward to get oh, more? Oh, I think, I think it absolutely does. I think that, you know, everybody talks about the Rotary moment, uh, the moment at which they really had an appreciation for how Rotary was affecting not other people's lives but their own. Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough to have several of them, but I think that understanding the grant process, how the foundation works, seeing and being able to talk to people in developing nations who have had an opportunity to benefit from Rotary has really changed my passion because I believe that you change the world one life at a time and talking to some of those one lives has been truly an extraordinary experience. Very good. Well, let's jump into the uh, photo sets that we have here because this kind of shows what it was like to be at the International Assembly. Again, 538 of your closest uh, governor classmates yes. uh, were there. First picture we have shows the hotel. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that hotel? How nice was it the, and did you get to spend time in the actual hotel itself? Actually, we didn't get out of the hotel. <laughs> the Manchester okay. Grand Hyatt is a magnificent hotel. The staff took really good care of us. There were about 1,200 people all together in attendance and somehow they got us all in rooms, fed and moved to the right places at the right time. Uh, it was an ideal hotel because there were also opportunities for breakouts and to spend time at the bar or just relaxing with your classmates. Perfect. Now did you find you had enough time to actually visit with different classmates, do a little networking? I think there. that was one of the challenges. Now there were a lot of breakout sessions and it's interesting to sit in a breakout section, session where you know you're all Rotarians, you're all doing the same thing, but there are people from nine countries in that room and the culture and the way in which they approach doing good in the world is different even though under the, under the clothing and in our skin we're all committed to the same thing. Very good. Thank you. Uh, second picture we have here shows actually the introduction of the Board of Directors. Now, how much interaction did you get to have with the actual Board of Directors themselves? It was fantastic. In addition to the Board, we had lunch with Rotary International pres uh, past president Cliff Docterman. We had dinner with uh, several of the RI directors. We had lunch with incoming RI President John Germ and his wife Judy. We spent some time with past RI Director Wilf Wilkerson and his wife and Bill Boyd and his wife Lorna. So it was a great opportunity to spend time with the current and past leadership of Rotary International and it gives you a different perspective on Rotary than you get either from your club or at the district level. Very true, very true. Now another picture we have shows um, John Germ with uh, great enterprises begin with great opportunities. That slide was part of his intro, wasn't it, into um, announcing and speaking to you as uh, the class. The well, class as you know, the, op the opportunity for John Germ as the incoming president is to announce, announce his theme. And his concept of great enterprises begin with great opportunities is very consistent with the theme I put together for my year as district governor, which is if you can dream it, you can do it. And it's all about finding the opportunity, empowering the Rotarians to pursue it, and with the support of their local clubs, our district, and the Rotary Foundation to make their dreams come true. Very good. I see um, the next picture shows uh, John Germ also being telecast. Um, they filmed most of the uh, sessions just about all of the assembly, correct? Absolutely, and I would encourage Rotarians who hear us speak today and want to learn more about the assembly to go to the rotary.org website to where the videos are, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the final night, which had speeches by the current president, the past president, I'm sorry, the incoming president and Cliff Docterman uh, were enough to really make you want to join Rotary even if you hadn't done before you came there. <laughs> Very good. Next picture shows uh, in the background one of the projects that was uh, in Africa, I believe, where they had a water project going on. Correct. And one of the things, as, as I think you know from your own international work, 
everything begins with water. Clean water and sanitation is where you start in any community. Uh, what this particular picture is showing is that instead of women having to spend hours a day walking to fetch water, this community is having a well installed by Rotary so that they have local water source. Very good. Next picture we have uh, shows the president, uh, current president, that's uh, Ravi Ravindran, introducing John Jerem as part of the uh, introduction to the theme itself. Absolutely, and I'm, uh, you know, and the nice thing about John and Ravi and all of the RI people, uh, executives, is they're people just like you. They share the same passions that you do. They share the same interests that you do. Uh, and uh, getting the opportunity to interact with them and talk about what makes them, what excites them, is something that I really put together to bring back to share with the presidents who will serve with me next year. Very good. Next picture we have shows the line of uh, presidents from Ravi, current president, to John Germ, your president, and then followed by Ian Risley of Australia. The three of them are on stage. Uh, basically hamming it up. They were having one good time. They were there. having a great time, but you know, that's an important lesson for us as district leaders and for the club presidents that working together is the best way to get things done. Yep, that's, that's it, good one. By the way, these pictures, uh, this first set that we ran through, actually, uh, I had the opportunity to be there. I took these pictures oh, from okay. the stage. Snuck up there. Um, I use a big camera, and so my big camera evidently is my pass to get to the front of the stage. <laughs> you did a so great worked job. worked out well. <laughs> you did a great job. Next one is uh, John Germ um, doing a presentation to the assembly. Right, and I think if you, go to the, if you can go to the next one, you can see what he's talking about. His theme, as you know, each Rotary International president has a theme. John's theme is Rotary Serving Humanity. It was met with a great deal of enthusiasm by the district governors who are there because it really talks about what we do as Rotarians in our communities and in local communities all around the world. And of course, the good looking young lady there is my wife <laughs> and uh, the, the less good looking guy is me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, very good. Now, was it a wardrobe uh, malfunction or something that you guys are all wearing the same colored? Coat. These Tell are us about this, that. this is John Germ's official jacket and his official tie. Uh, my official jacket is in the tailors right now, <laughs> or I okay. would have worn it today. Uh -huh. But everybody walked around in the same jacket, and when I told somebody who needed to meet me that I was the person in the theme jacket with the theme tie, uh, <laughs> they didn't think that was a very good explanation <laughs> of where I was. <laughs> That's very good. Um, Ty, let's talk about the tie, since I thought you were going to wear yours, but I ended up wearing mine. So. Well, I, I, wore, I wrote, read your hints <laughs> that said don't wear anything with a very complex pattern. This tie is actually the tie of Ray Klingensmith, who is currently the chair of the trustees of the Rotary very Foundation. Good. So it's one I'm very excited about because, as you know, we get to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the foundation next year. Yeah. So, uh, but when you see me again, I'll be wearing the theme tie. <laughs> that sounds good. So each year a theme tie comes out along with the coat, along right. with the... Um, along with the theme the and theme. the banners and lots of pins and paraphernalia. This is true. Now you have your pin on. I see this is, yes. that's your theme pin there. That's the new beautiful, theme pin. Beautiful pin. Picture uh, that we have next shows the, again, the theme banner, one of the presentations that are in front of the assembly. The following picture after that actually shows a picture that I took of the audience. Now, there's about 1,200 people out there, There are about right? 1,200 people out there. One of the interesting challenges that, you know, we face in Rotary is people in so many countries and nine official languages. And if you looked at the uh, picture with the theme on it, it's in all the languages. Right. Right. And uh, we were sitting there being attentive. Fortunately, if you, had, if you were in English, you didn't need translators, but there were translation devices for everybody who spoke one of the other eight languages. Got it. Very good. So I, that would probably be one of the major challenges, I would guess, for the assembly is to try and get everybody at, on the same language, speaking the same. Absolutely. 
Next picture we have is a, a group of ladies. Actually, I'm guessing they're probably governor elects or governor elect wives. The lady in the center is Barbara Orth, uh, actually from California. That's right, she is. One She's of your classmates' absolutely. wives, correct? Absolutely. Yes, that's, that's Barbara. This was festival night where everybody is encouraged to come in their native costumes. And uh, amazing experience looking back. We were sitting up toward the front of the room looking back at all the color yeah. of all the people in their district, different uh, native costumes. Now question, do you know why Barbara was wearing the, uh, the kimono? I do not. I would <laughs> assume it's because she has visited Japan Probably and right. uh, got it there. I know that we're looking forward to our international travels and coming back with local costumes. Next picture we have uh, shows a group having a very good time, international group. My guess is, is that the uh, International Assembly wasn't all just work, had a little bit of a fun flair to it? It had a lot of fun flair. As I said, this was what they call festival night, where a lot of the different countries put on skits. Uh, this was the two that you have here are from India, and they were actually different cultures from, in from India in three different parts of the stage doing different things wow. that were unique to their particular culture. I think one of the most interesting ones that you don't have a picture of is the people from uh, Rotary International in the UK came dressed as Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts <laughs> Club band and uh, proceeded to serenade us with Rotary songs. Sounds good. Now was that the same night too? I heard that some of the um, Rotary International dignitaries were dressed in boxes. That is correct. As you know, Ravi's theme this year is be a gift to the world. So all of the Rotary International directors, both current and incoming, came dressed in gift boxes. <laughs> That's a good and one. And they <laughs> were the gift to the world. <laughs> good. And festival night. I understand that there's actually a um, tryout and audition to be one of the finalists on the stage. Absolutely. There is competition and uh, the evening was wonderful. It was exciting. It gave everybody a chance to show off, and those that didn't were a loud and boisterous audience. <laughs> the next picture we have, actually, I took of the um, translation booth. Right. So that was uh, pretty fascinating. They had two of those in the main area, and believe it or not, there's a very similar setup to this at Rotary Headquarters, where the Board of Directors, when they meet, do the same thing. There's simultaneous translation. So right there on the spot, they get translated. It's pretty spectacular what they do. I mean, when you figure that you've got an organization that has nine languages and an unlimited number of different currencies, and somehow we make it all work, I think you have to give a lot of credit to the people in Evanston. Very true. What is that, about 200 different countries yeah. and geographical yes. regions? Yes. Amazing, amazing. Next picture we have of you, looks like you're dressed up there. Um, picture with the flags and probably your classmate, right? This is the last night, this is the final dinner. We, uh, we're we all dressed up, we clean up pretty well. Uh, <laughs> you definitely do, you're looking good there. And the people who I'm with, that's Dr. John Daniel and his wife, Dr. Mira Daniel. Uh, one of the things they showed us on one of the uh, plenary sessions was a bus that has been put together to take mammograms and other women's health wow. clinic from place to place. Uh, we're talking to Mira about doing that bus as a district project with our district and the other five districts in Southern California. Great, so the networking portion is huge. Oh, it's tremendous. Great, picture below it, next picture that we have here shows a picture again with one of your classmates well, that, who I recognize. Well, that's Carlos so. and Sandra from District 4250. Right. Uh, because our district does so many projects in that area, which is Guatemala, Belize, and Honduras, and a lot of our very good friends in Rotary are in Honduras. Uh, this is my classmate from that particular district, and we will be doing projects okay. together. In fact, uh, friends from Honduras, past district governor Carmen Martinez and Vialta and her husband will be coming up for our district conference in, December, in uh, October. Perfect. Actually, I'll be seeing Carlos in about another three or four weeks. I'm visiting Honduras again for a project. Fantastic. You know, Say hi. Uh, I will definitely do that. Carlos Flores, um, just to let you know a little insight on him, he goes by Charlie Flower. 
Well, you know, everybody <laughs> in Honduras has a nickname. <laughs> okay. And uh, so we need to meet his nickname. But try, you know, trying to find a person in 538 district governors wasn't the easiest thing <laughs> to true. do. And I actually had to uh, text our friend Carmen, who sent him a text, and we okay. figured out how to meet. Good. Very good. Next picture we have is of classmates. It looks like this is mostly uh, Californians or actually this West Coast? This is Zone 25, Zone 26. Okay. So it's Arizona, California, Oregon, Washington, Hawaii, parts of British Columbia, a little bit of Nevada. Uh, these are our classmates on festival night, and most of us came dressed in the shirt that we're wearing. The blue shirt is the theme shirt for Clint Schroeder, who is the district governor-elect of uh, District 5000 in Hawaii. And nice. we all decided we would wear his shirt. <laughs> Very good. And uh, of course, the people in the front in orange with the Brazil flag are John and Judy Germ, the incoming RI president-elect and his wife. Nice. Who just happened to be walking by. Oh, and we said, right? John, get in the picture. <laughs> That's perfect. Looks like so it was stage great. for it. Yeah. It was great. Good timing there. Next picture we have is, uh, again, classmates, no doubt about that, um, dressed up. This event was? This was the final night. This was the big banquet night. We decided that since you had a chance to see us a little bit scruffy, <laughs> we would show people we could uh, clean up. And it took us probably about 45 minutes to get this picture set up. <laughs> but uh, these are again zone 25 to 26. These are the people that I will be working with the closest, at least in the zones, for. Uh, next year, and as I think, as you know, the Zone Institute, to which all these people will be coming, is actually being hosted in our own backyard in Santa Barbara at the Fest Parker Doubletree this year. I hear that. Actually, we're going to be having a show on that, so it should be a Sounds one fantastic. outstanding event there. Picture next we have is of you and your wife Heather, and the great picture, by the way. Uh, anything you want to tell us about that? Was that kind of a closing picture? Well, what or? we wanted to do, I mean, obviously it's a posed picture, but what we wanted to do is get the flags in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the things that has impressed us so much about our time in Rotary is the way that international partners work together. And in fact, we came back with probably a dozen potential grant opportunities for our district or for other districts nearby us. People, we went specifically looking for grant partners. Uh, we came back with people in Central America, South America, Europe, Asia, India, uh, literally all over the world who are interested in doing grants with us. And I think that was one of the wonderful opportunities is the friendships that we made and that will continue long after we all said goodbye to San Diego. Now tell us, I didn't get any pictures on this because most of the pictures, to be honest with you, the class sessions, the breakout sessions, were a little bit boring. So tell us about what a session was like and one of your actual breakout sessions. Each breakout session had a theme and an international facilitator. And again, you talk about international, there were facilit I had facilitators literally from all over the world. We were given a problem or a project to work on. We worked in small groups. We reported back to the group. Each one session was about 90 minutes. And one of the things that I know helps people learn is the opportunity to work closely in small groups. It was a tremendous learning opportunity, everything from uh, fundraising to the foundation, the impact of Polio Plus and what it's going to mean to us, hopefully, uh, and you know, my class of district governors could very well be the last class that ever has to report a case of polio in the world. We talked sure. about things that we could do to excite our clubs. Uh, it was a learning experience because it was learning from people who approach things just a little bit differently than we do in Southern California. <laughs> Good. Tell us about the uh, attendance factor. I know for a fact that when we were there, they are very stringent on keeping attendance at each and every breakout session. Did well, you notice that? Oh, <laughs> did I know? It's hard not to notice. As you know, this is one of the few events that Rotary International pays for directly. Right. And they believe if they pay for it, they would like you to show up. So all the plenaries, all the meals, they scanned your badge, all of the breakouts, attendance was taken. Uh, you know, they have a completely separate breakout for the partners. Right. And in the last breakout, when we were asked 
individually what was the best part of the International Assembly. Now, as you know, I have a Rotarian wife. But the, I would say about a quarter of the people in the breakout session said the best thing was the partners breakout because it gave their partners a better understanding of Rotary and the role of the district governor and how they, the partner, can help make the year more successful. That's perfect, great. Now, in realizing what the event actually is and that it is mandatory for all governors to go, if you don't go, you don't attend, you don't become a governor. Right. The accountability, I think, is pretty unique in that true Rotary International is paying for it. It's millions of dollars. From what I heard, it's close to $10 million yeah. for the event. But the accountability is always that the funds come from our members. Understood. And, that, and, that and we all need to be good stewards correct. of our members' money. And there were some people who objected to you know, having being checked in and checked out. But I think once you understand yeah. that you are accountable to your members, right. whether it's a grant, whether it's a training experience, or whether it's this event in San Diego, that we need to be good stewards, we need to show them that we're taking good care of their money. And I will tell you that from the education, the experience, and I think the benefit both to me as an incoming governor and to our district, if we can really bring some of these projects and friendships back, uh, we're going to be very successful. You know, one idea that I picked up there that I'm going to pass on to my successor is we're three hours from San Diego. Why don't we host some of the district governor Good. elects Good right idea. here, show them our community, start that friendship building the week before, and be prepared to go to San Diego with a whole bunch of new friends. Now I've got one last slide here, and this slide is actually your theme, Rotary Serving Humanity. I wanted to put that up on the screen because that is going to be the banner we are going to be flying, flying the whole next year. So with that, thank you very much. I would also like to point out that at one point in time, they talked about the International Assembly actually going away. The benefits, in my opinion, were huge, and that had to do with networking and how we could form and gain those partnerships together and acquaintances to do great in the world. What's your take on that? I absolutely agree. You know, the opportunity in one place to meet people who have a common goal to do good in the world, that want to work with you in partnership, that the friendships that we built, let me tell you, when I uh, send an email to Dr. John, John or Mira, they know who I am, they spent time with me and my wife, that's already begun to build the bond that hopefully Great. will result in us That's what we work. wanted to hear. With that, we actually ran out of time, Nick, so I, my apologies for having to cut you short on that one, but. You're going to be a great leader. We look forward to your leadership next year. With that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that. Not very many people get an opportunity to actually participate in the International Assemblies in San Diego. With that, I want to try and bring a little bit to you so you can see what it's all about. And we will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much for all you do.